Is that the way you feel tonight? Do you really feel like traveling on tonight? That has to be in the heart of every believer. Every moment you have on this earth, your thoughts should be, Lord, I feel like coming home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we don't come home like, like wimps. We don't come home defeated. We are not called to be defeated. We are a special breed. We have a strength from within that this world cannot touch nor take away. Hallelujah. We are called to be resolute. We are called to stand the test of time. And because of he that called us, we have this confidence that we will never be defeated. Blessed be the name of the living God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Mighty Jesus, mighty conqueror, the creator of heaven and earth, we adore your name tonight, my Lord. It's a night of prayer. We just have a few minutes, Lord Jesus, to be in your presence. For we know that, Lord Jesus, many will still have to go to work tonight. Some are still coming on their way from work. My Lord, my God, and thou who has created us and separated us from our mother's womb, thou who has given us this opportunity to worship you, Lord. We pray that our garden is not in vain. And even as we pray from this place, and this prayer will touch many who are yearning for peace, many who are yearning to know you, many who are depressed, many who are in situation that's unbearable in their mind. Many who are calling for help. They are reaching out to you, my Lord, my God. Our prayer is never in vain. For the favorite prayers of the saints are much. And our cry comes to you, my Lord, like a sweet smelling savor. May you take this prayer, my Lord. May you take this gathering, my Lord. May you come to you acceptable in that presence. May every word that will come from my mouth tonight, may it encourage somebody to lift up their faith, to encourage their faith, to know that thou art the same Jesus, yesterday, today, and forever. May the songs that we have sang be acceptable unto thee. May the time that we are spending before your presence be acceptable unto thee. Lord, we pray with thanksgiving in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I greet each and every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that uh, tomorrow, many of you know, tomorrow is a baptism day. So tomorrow, Sister Claudia will receive her baptism. And uh, taking her to my, my cousin's place in South uh, Jersey. They have a nice swimming pool, um, a very wonderful swimming pool. Those who come, we see. Um, that um, would be a, a very good place. I just thought about that and I called my cousin on Sunday. I said, I say, cousin, now we need your place for baptism. She goes, anytime that you want to come, the pool is all yours. So we'll be there at 11 o'clock tomorrow by the grace of God. And I pray that Sister Joyce is coming because she just texts me on my way. She says, we'd like to ride with Sister Joyce. I said, that's all good. Amen. Let's just endeavor to be there. I'm going to leave my house like 9.30. So we can get there on time and come back on time as well. Hallelujah. Amen. You love the Lord. Amen. My flight was supposed to be on 29th. I received a text from the airline about two days ago that the flight was canceled and I had to rebook right away. You know, coronavirus is shaking the world, but not shaking the bride. Hallelujah. Amen. So they, they canceled the flight, but I rebooked to August 2, which is a week after that. All is well. Hallelujah. There's no fear. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight it is not a prayer. I want us to build our faith on prayer tonight on a short scripture. And then we read a few more scripture. Time willing. Um, our subject tonight will be wait upon the Lord. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Let's open Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. And it reads this way. But they that wait upon the Lord Hallelujah. shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up wings as they go. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. May I have your seats. While I go into the preaching tonight before prayer, my way of testimony again, I think you saw, I put it, said, I believe some of you saw it on Tuesday. On Tuesday, uh, you know, walking from home and you know, work is becoming a little bit hectic. And, uh, you know, just a little bit hectic. And I know the Lord, whenever I feel that way, he does something. So, but I was sitting there after finishing the day's work and it was almost uh, 11 o'clock and the phone rang again. I picked it up and there was a man on the other line. I asked him, what's your name? He said, his name is Michael. Where do you live? He said, he lives in Newark, New Jersey. And he began to weep, uncontrollable. And I just listened to him. He cried and cried and cried and cried. And I asked him, why are you crying? He said, my wife left me. He's been married for 13 years. And the wife left with their child. And he's just destroyed. He doesn't know what to do, how to continue his life. And so I began to pray for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I began to feel his pain. Now, I don't know what contributed to the wife living because I'm not a judge. I'm just feeling his pain. But one thing I told him is, I cannot offer you peace, but I have one that can offer you peace. His name is Jesus Christ. And upon that basis, we pray together. And I send him the information for the church. Perhaps he might come on Sunday. Perhaps he might not come. But all is well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I spoke to sister. Uh, sister that came, I believe, uh, sister uh, uh, Emma. Emma. Sister Emma. I spoke to her today. She says she might come in. She might use Uber to come this evening. If she comes, all is well. If she doesn't, all is well. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the living God. Now tonight we are talking about wait upon the Lord. And we read this scripture. The prophet preached many messages relating to this. He preached the message as the ego was stirred in it. And he related his story using Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32, 11. Let's see that scripture real quick. And then we'll go back to this. In Deuteronomy 32, 11, the prophet used that scripture to preach the message as the eagle stared the net. He said, as the eagle stared the net, stared up the her nest, fluttered over her young, spreaded abroad her wings, taking them, bearing them on her wings. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It's all about a characteristics of an eagle. But here, I want us to take this word kind of take it apart a little bit. We read, they that wait upon the Lord, first, they shall renew their strength. Let's take that. Renew your strength. I begin to ponder the strength. The strength that we have as we go through life. As, as a youth, you have a different type of strength. But the Bible is telling you your strength is renewed to remain a youth. Because before the presence of the Lord, you never get old. Now think about the strength of a youth. If you watch those people running 100 meters, you see them how quick they can run. You watch those running marathon, how they can run for miles and miles. But as your body begins to put the weight of the cares of this world, sometimes you cannot run no more. But your strength is renewed Amen. as you wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I begin to ponder a man, a man called Caleb, according to Joshua 14, from 6 to 15. This man called Caleb, he has a testimony. And he, and he was talking to Joshua, now that they are in the promised land. He said to Joshua, I was 40 years old when Moses sent us to Kenneth Benia. He said, and I went to Kenneth Benia and I came back with good report.
report. And then Moses swore that when we get to the promised land, a nice portion of the land will belong to me. He said, I was 40 years then. And it's been 45 years since then that we came to the promised land. That means he was waiting for the Lord. He waited 45 more years. And then he marched up to Joshua. He said, Joshua, the commander, give me this mountain. This mountain belongs to me. He said, my youth is still with me. I am 85 years old. But I still feel as though I am as young as when I was 40 when Moses sent me to Kenish Benia. In other words, his youth was renewed. He said, I can go up to this mountain. I can defeat the Amalekites. I can defeat the Jebutites. I can chase away the Philistines. I can take the mountain. It belongs to me. That is my inheritance. He is from the tribe of Judah. He said, that's my inheritance. That's what Moses said. In the land of Hebron, it belongs to me. Give me this mountain. He waited for the Lord. And the Lord renewed his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And they that wait upon the Lord first, they shall renew their strength. They will never get old. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet said beyond the cutting of time. They are all young. Amen. Hallelujah. They waited upon the Lord. When they were on this earth. And even though they depart from this earth, they are still young. Hallelujah. There's no old age. There's no gray hair. Hallelujah. Despite the cares of this world, despite the burden of this world, but as long as you're waiting upon the Lord, your strength is renewed. Hallelujah. And second thing, my brothers and sisters, there's a mount of wings as an eagle. Hallelujah. So I went to preach a little bit and de discern a little bit the characteristics of the ego wing. How does an ego wing look like? Hallelujah. And it says this in my finding. The ego can achieve 30 miles per hour using powerful wings that beats and even faster when he's diving after a prey. When he's stooping to get a prey. He says there, the bald ego can dive up to 100 miles per hour. Oh now, you that are driving a car, you're not allowed to drive more than 60 miles an hour. But an eagle with his wings can dive even 100 miles per hour, and then the golden eagle can even go as up to 150 miles per hour. Hallelujah! Amen. This is the characteristics of the wings of an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Now, mount up wings. The strength of these wings. Hallelujah. Now, the eagle feather, the eagle feather, he said, and any part of an eagle, they are federal protected. In other words, you are not allowed to take even eagle's feather to your house. It's a federal property. Hallelujah. See, by inspiration, the founding fathers, they liken America to the ego. And when you take their money, you see the ego there. Hallelujah. And God liking his prophets to egos. And now the scripture is telling us, not just his prophet, but they that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Their wings will be mounted just like an ego. Hallelujah. That's the scripture. See, the average wingspan of a golden ego is between 6 to 7.5 feet. And the wingspan of an ego depends on the overall size. Hallelujah. An ego has over 7,000 feathers. Oh man. Hallelujah. It's an ego, see now, has over 7,000 feathers. And the prophet, when he was preaching that message, as the ego stood in there, he said, You cannot even take anything and pluck that feather out. The feather is as strong as tied to the body of an ego that even if you want to take a pluck to pluck it out, it's not moving. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. And now the prophet gave us analysis. He said, when he went to the zoo and he was going there with his children, he said the most miserable, miserable sight that he saw was looking at an ego. An ego and a bird that was meant to fly freely was tied up in a cage somewhere. 
And when eagle will get up from one side of the cage, he will fly to the other side and beat his big old wings only to find himself standing still there. And he said he will find a corner and he wept. And while he was weeping, God told him, you have seen something worse than this. Hallelujah. What is worse than the sack of an eagle with his mighty wings that was meant to soar the sky? That was meant to fly as high as any bird, higher than any bird ever created. Hallelujah. That can dive at 150 miles an hour. Something was worse than that being caged up and in a cage. Prophet said, It is a Christian, a Christian that is bound by the boundaries of denomination, a Christian that is bound by creed, a Christian that is bound by dogma. Hallelujah. A Christian that is not free to worship God. A Christian that is bound by unbelief. A Christian that cannot worship God in spirit and in truth. A Christian who claimed to know God but said that the days of miracles are over. A Christian who says there's no money for prayer. A Christian who says you cannot lay hand on the sick. A Christian who says it's only the days of the prophet that God moved on the sin. A Christian who can say such a word is worse than an ego that's killed. Hallelujah! And the prophet talking about a man called Buddy Ryan. Buddy Robson. He said, Buddy Robson was a farmer who found himself in a farm somewhere. And he spoke to God. And he said to God in his coming, he said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost, when you come back here, you will see the bones of this body Robertson sitting there on that coming. Why? He was waiting for the Lord. And he knows he's not waiting in vain. And they that wait upon the Lord, not only they shall renew their strength, but their mount up wings like an echo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and when you see the more characteristics of an ego, we don't want to go deep because time is fast approaching us here. But look at the eyes of an ego with the wings of an ego. Do you know the ego has a peripheral sight? Right. In other words, an ego can see 45, 45 degree angle, not just straight. So an ego has his two eyes. He can use one eye to look straight and the other eye looking backwards. He can control his eyes. The, in, in the literature here, an ego has two focal points. It's called what they call the fovea, which is singular, and the fovrek, which is plural. One of which will look forward, the other one will look sideways, about 45 degree angle. Can you imagine that? Oh and this is what the Bible is tapping you and I. Amen. This is our characteristics. Amen. In other words, we can see everything. Amen. We can see the preview. We can see devil and his tactics. We can see all his manipulation. Hallelujah. Because you're waiting upon the Lord. You're not alone. And when you're waiting upon the Lord, nothing will rest in you. Hallelujah. You are constant like the northern star. You're not moved by no circumstances. No situation can move you because you know who you're waiting for. Hallelujah. 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 You just sit there and wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it says here also, as you're waiting upon the Lord, as your strength is renewed, as you are now mounting up wings like an eagle, something that's comes into preview, you say, they shall run. They shall run. Hallelujah. So let's take that for a second now. We talk about renewing your strength. But when you're running, what are you running for? You're running a race. That's right. Amen. You're running a race. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul said, run this race with mastery. Mm -hmm. Running like one who likes to win. Right. And when his days on earth was over, he said, I've run a good race and I've finished the course. And I know there's crown of victory before me. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the fact that there was a sword waiting for the neck of Apostle Paul. But he said, I've run this race. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, you waiting upon the Lord, you will run this race. And when you run this race, you will not be weary. You will not be tired of running the race of life. Hallelujah. There are many characteristics of the race of life. You're not just running the race spiritually, you're also running the race physically. As 
because you're running the race physically. You're running the race to have food on the table for your family. Yeah. You're running the race to be able to pay your bills. Yeah. You're running the race to have happiness in your house. Those are part of running the race. Because the physical type is spiritual. Hallelujah. David said, I was, was young, but now I am old. And I have never seen a child of God begging for bread. As you are running this race, he will provide your need. Because you are waiting for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As you run the race, waiting for the Lord, you shall lack nothing. Amen. A muscle of bread is not lacking in your house. You have a pile of oil lacking in your house. Because you are waiting upon the Lord. There's no devil, no demon that can take away your peace. Because you're waiting upon the Lord. Because you're crying upon, waiting upon the Lord. Why you're waiting upon the Lord? You're eating manna of your day. That's what is feasting you. That's what is cupping you. That's what is holding you. Why you're waiting for him? You're eating night and day. The spiritual food in due season. They might call you crazy. They might say you lost your mind. But you know who you're waiting for. You know who called you. You know who predestinated you. You stand there and see the suffering of the God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Trials may come your way. Persecution may come your way. But you're running the race. Because you're running to win. Job of old brought a pretty message. I know my lady, my limit. Hallelujah. And he took it for the book of Job. Job of old. He said, I had a heart of God. I heard of him from the hearing. But now I see. How did he see God? When he was running the race. He encountered some things along the way. But he knew he was waiting for the Lord. He knew he had done nothing wrong. Friends may come and say to him, Job, you know you've done something wrong. That's why you're facing these things. And Job could say, I am waiting for the Lord. And I've done nothing wrong. Hallelujah. He waited for the Lord. Oh, those came one day come upon him. But he ran the race with mastery. And he was not moved. Though his wife may come and defy him. Both his wife come and said to him, Job, why not curse the Lord and just die? Right. But he never did. He was running a race. And he was not weary. Hallelujah. And then he continued in the scripture here. He said, now you will walk. You will not faint. See, when I came upon that walk, then I begin to find the difference between youth young age and old age. See, see, when, when you're young and, and you're fresh, you're running the race. See, as you get weary and older a little bit, you begin to walk. I can see my mom, she can't run no more. Hallelujah. She's now on the walking aspect of the race. She's no longer running. She's walking. Slowly. You begin to take this easy. Hallelujah. Sometimes you might need a walker to walk here. Hallelujah. Sometimes you need somebody to help you walk. Hallelujah. See now, first you are running. It was your youth. The sun is coming out. The flower is blossoming. But at evening time, the flower is going down. See now. And then you, all you can do is walk. As, as you are walking still, the Bible says you will not faint. Because you are waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a man like Simeon. Who came to the point where he can just walk. He's no longer running. Simeon was almost... 100 years or whatever, but he was waiting for the coming of the Lord. The Bible told us he was stricken of age. He waited all his life for the coming of Messiah. You see, at this point, Simeon is just walking. He walks into the temple every day. He's no longer running. He's just walking step by step. He's waiting upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And one day he walked into the temple. And one corner he see him there. And he can look and see. And there comes Mary and Joseph. With the little Jesus walking in to be dedicated, hallelujah. And the angel of the living God came, and the Holy Ghost came and drew Simeon straight to Jesus. This is the Messiah we're waiting for. He was walking at this point, hallelujah. He was just walking with the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. And if God willing, if God willing, if God tarries, one day all we can do is walk. Hallelujah. But even if you walk or you're wrong, it's still upon the Lord. Hallelujah. You will not be weary. You will not faint. Hallelujah. 
Oh, let's give the Lord a hand. Let's give him a hand. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 30, 18, he says this way. And therefore, when the Lord waits, that he may be glorious unto you, and therefore, will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is God of judgment. Blessed are they. Amen. Blessed are they that wait for him. Hallelujah. You are blessed tonight because you are waiting for him. Hallelujah. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. They shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. And you know what the Bible says about inheriting the earth? The meek, Jesus says, the meek and the psalm say, the meek shall inherit the earth. So it means that they that wait upon the Lord are actually the meek. Hallelujah. You can draw the inference. Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. David in the psalm said, the meek shall inherit the earth. And here Isaiah is writing, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. They are the meek. Oh, blessed be the name of the living God. As a meek, nothing shakes them. As a meek, they know the voice. And the prophet talked about how that the, 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 the echo makes his voice known to the eaglets. He said the echo, the mother echo will come to the nest sometimes. And he begin to shout. And just keep shouting. And keep shouting. Why is the eagle shouting? So that the eaglets will recognize her voice. He just shouted so they will know her voice in case of danger. So that when the ego is out somewhere and he perceives danger in the camp, he will shout and the little eaglets will know what to do. And Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice. And when I call, they answer. Because you've been trained to know the voice of Jesus. You know the voice of the Messiah. When he spoke to you by the mouth of his prophet. You know that was him. Hallelujah. And because you know that, the word that you heard, it makes you comfortable. You're not fighting the word. You just accept the word. Because you've been trained to recognize the voice of God. Why? We shall get to some of that on Sunday. Why? Because before the third mountain was made, I was in him. I was a part of him. I know who he is. Amen. I didn't say I know who he was. He's always is. Amen. He never was. Right. He's always is. Right. He's present tense God. Yeah. Because say, I am that I am. Yes. He said to Moses, I am. He didn't say I was. I am that I am. Ever present God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the living God. Do you love him? Amen. Hallelujah. In the message, a true sign that's overlooked. 1961, November 12, I have few quotes here and there. I'm going to try to make sure we finish here by 9.30. So our brother is going to walk 10 o'clock. We should be out of here by 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we are soldiers. We know what we are up against. Hallelujah. But we are wise. Hallelujah. And we bear each other's burden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I have said to you, maybe Wednesday, you take Wednesday as your family day and if perhaps you can listen to the message. I played the message, by the way, on Wednesday. And if you tuned in, you will see I was, I was on, on Zoom playing the message. So if you want to tune in on Zoom on Wednesday, you can still tune in and listen to the same message that I'm listening to where what I call. Hallelujah. But if you want to take it and just pray, take it and pray. Because the time we're living in is very troublesome. I understand that. I'm part of you in level. Hallelujah. I know what it means. I know what it means to wait for 5 p.m. So you can just say, I'm done for the day. I know what it means. I know what it means to say by 6 o'clock, I'm going to turn off my computer. I know what it means. It's a stress that I will never be able to explain. And I keep saying to God, when am I going to retire? So I don't go through this again. I've had enough. But I still know I have young children I need to raise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Dave comes to me and says, Daddy, it's time to pay the school fee. Hallelujah. I look at my son and say, Son, I want to do that. Hallelujah. I wish I could do two jobs to help you pay it off. Hallelujah. And Corinthians still had to enter school. And Gideon is waiting for his college day. Hallelujah. We got job to do, my friends. Hallelujah. 
But we have to keep pressing on. Hallelujah. And we have a little friend sitting there, sitting on the father's arm. See now, but I can tell me you want to retire because but I need to say, Daddy, I'm here. Hallelujah. I need some help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God willing, he will make our way. We are waiting for him to give us a way that we can manage. We don't want our mind to be so focused on these things. We are waiting for the Lord to really move us in the way that we can manage every situation. Because the whole essence of creating me and you is to worship him. And I want to worship him with all my strength, with all that's within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I don't see Brother Solomon here because he's at work, I believe. You see now? Hallelujah. We are pressed at every corner. We have things to do. Hallelujah. Although my precious brother is sitting there, Brother Anthony, but I know sometimes your mind is going into the program you have to do when you get home. I know what it means to be a programmer. Hallelujah. He can be sitting there and thinking about the code and the logic he's doing when he gets home. Hallelujah. That's how the mind works. Hallelujah. I know what I'm saying. But blessed be the name of the living God who has given us the privilege to be Christians. And when you come here and spend an hour or two, let it be an hour or two that's worth your time. You're coming to dedicate your time, to renew your strength, to go back again and do even better. Hallelujah. And be a blessing to somebody. And don't listen to whatever devil tells you. You tell that devil, the day I became born again, I got rid of you. I got no part of you. The prophet talked about a man who took a stick and told devil. He drew a line and said, devil, the day I was born again, you didn't, you, you didn't cross the stick. And you stay there and I stay here. Hallelujah. You put a mind to devil. Say, devil, you cannot find me no more. You think you can see me? You're not seeing me. You're seeing Christ in me. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name Amen. of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophet said on that two nights, they were in upper chamber, all with one accord, waiting, waiting for they would their wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the can ego. Don't just go there and say, Lord, I am sorry of my sin. Now I accept my faith. That I've got the Holy Ghost and you walk away. No. They that wait upon the Lord, they wait weeks, days, whatever it is, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle. They will run and not be weary. If they walk, they will not faint. Teach me. Teach me, Lord. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Teach me to wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. In the message, blind Bethimius was so much, and time will not permit me to read all of it. I'm only on page two of 14 page message, and we have to end. Hallelujah. I'm only on page two. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Yes. You love the Lord? Yes. I'm going to skip blind Bethimius. But blind Bethimius' message was so suited to waiting upon the Lord. How you know his story, how he waited, how he sacrificed everything. And the prophet analyzing like his story in that message, blind Bethimius. 1959, November 27. He analyzed it. He, he kind of put it in. I love the way sometimes Brother Branham tells story. You know, it captivates your attention if you pay attention to the spiritual tale of the story. If you just put your mind in the message, you begin to see where he's leading you. The life of blind Bethimius. Everything he sacrificed. But he said on this day, he was just walking down on the street of Nazareth and he found a stone. He said he just sat around the stone. And he was just wondering what's going on. And there was some noise going on. He said, perhaps a little lady came and saw him. He said, well, what, what, do you want a place to sit? He said, can you help me? And he helped him to a bigger stone. And he sat on this stone. He just sitting there. And so much commotion was going on. And he asked the lady, who is this that's passing by? I hear so much noise. He said, but the noise was mixed. Because some of the noise were people cursing Jesus. Mocking him. Calling him names. You know, Beelzebub, whatever they want to call him, false prophet. They were calling me all kinds of names. But you know, he was listening. But you can hear some people also saying, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then Brian Bethimius is saying, although this noise is happening, but there's a particular noise that he's paying attention to. And he asked, what does this Jesus do? Somebody told him, he heals the sick. He said, then I want him to help me. Then begin to call him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And somehow his noise reached Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And tonight, when you call on him, your noise will reach him. Because we call him for the sincerity of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will call him and believe he can hear you. He had planned Bethimius that day, despite all controlling noise. When you call him from your heart, when you really call him because you mean it, when you call him because you have sold out, when you call him because you're dedicated, when you call him because you're all, oh, that's all I have. I have nothing else but him. When he's your all and all, when he's your ultimate, when he became your ultimate at that darkest hour, when there seemed to be no more opportunity, there seemed to be no more chance, and the prophet taught me to believe it is the darkest hour that you see the power of Jesus. It is at the darkest hour that you see him move. It's at the darkest hour that you see the manifestation of the spirit of living God. It is at the darkest hour when nothing is going your way, when you cannot understand no more, at the darkest hour that you're waiting for him. You're not moving or shaking like a leaf. Then he will prove to you he called you, he made you, he has a purpose for you. He will prove to you the essence of the message is to become the message. He will prove to you, I am he that liveth, and I die to die no more, and I live and die, and I live to die no more. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I have the key of life, I have the key of death, I have the key of grave, and give to whomsoever I will. He said, If so, I hate, but check up my love. They that I love, I chasten them, and I call them and I predestinate them to be sons and daughters of God. Do you believe in him? Give him a hand tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, blind Betimius. I'm going to come to him tonight. That blind Betimius. Oh, another message. Oh, hearing, receiving, and acting. Hearing, receiving, and acting. Oh, 1960. Hallelujah. There's so much there. Oh, he talked about Jacob. Oh, a bunch of Jacobs that we are. When he told the disciples on line 54, he said, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. After this, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Then you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in the uttermost part of the world. What? Wait. Wait for, said the prophet. Wait. Go to Jerusalem. Wait there until this promise comes. Lord, you called us. Is that not good enough? Yes, that is all right, said Brother Abraham. Yes, but you give us power to cast out devil. Is that all right? Yeah, that is all right. But I want you to go up there and wait. Wait. They had God say it. They recognized that it, he, he, he wasn't some illegitimate person. He was God made flesh among us. And he knew who that was. So they were up in Jerusalem because God says so. They went up there and they waited. They recognized it to be God. And all at once, they were in the action. You know what the result was? They staggered like they were drunk men. They spoke in tongue. Oh, the awful outfit you ever had in your life. Till these people say, this man are full of the new wine. Hallelujah. He was poor out in the ocean. But the prophet was closing with the message. He said, poor in the ocean. He was obeying the commandment of God. That God was having them to say, to sail somewhere. They let loose of the shore. But when God told Paul, he told him, he told him not to do it. But the, the, the shipmaster, oh, he, he was an intellectual. He knew more about the sea than God did. He couldn't believe God's prophet. So he just let loose the ship and started selling. And it was 14 days long. And there was no moon, no star. And the little old ship was all locked. And all hope were gone. They threw everything overboard, just about, to unload the ship. And it was just all hope was gone. I imagine Paul. He was down there. He was walking up and down the gallery somewhere. In the bunker somewhere saying, Well, Lord, I'll come to you on the ocean. I suppose just walking up and down and just having a good time that night, rejoicing, dragging those chains behind him. And all at once, the next morning, here comes the running on top of the deck. Oh, them little old hands chained down, his feet dragged like that with the chains behind him. He shackled. 
just like the world is shackling some of us, hallelujah. He's shackled the hands like that. Oh, like a man, hysterically, he's saying, be of good courage, Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, what's the matter with this, you boy? Oh, that little hook nose, Jew up there, just shaking his head and, and, and carrying on. What's the matter, Paul? Be of good courage. Go ahead and eat something. You ain't eat for a long time. Oh, you've been fasting too long now. Oh, eat something, hallelujah. I can't wait to finish preaching too, and I go home and eat something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? It's at the darkest hour that he proved himself to be the Messiah. It's at the darkest hour, even when sickness will come, he proved himself to be the healer. At the darkest hour, when there seems to be no hope, all disease may strike him, but he is still the healer. At the darkest hour, there is no hope, but he is still the hope of all the hope. He is the father of the fatherland. He is the mother of the motherland. He is the friend of the lonely. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Blessed be his holy name. Oh, be of good courage. Nothing is going to be lost. Oh, what you so saw, Paul. What made you so poor, Saul? What happened to you? Have you gone out of your head? Oh, maybe you have fasted so long till you become delirious. Oh, no, last night, the angel of the Lord, whose servant I am, he stood by me and said, Paul, don't you get scared, hallelujah. He said, there's not going to be any life that's lost, and I believe God. Oh, till he be just told me what he had, he recognized it to be God. And he was in action before anything took place. We need to be in action tonight. Oh, hallelujah. The moon was just as far as it was. The sun was just as far as it was. The stars were all shining. The sheep was just ready to go down as it was. The devil was sitting on every wave. Oh, every glare in the mouth and shining his teeth and shining his teeth and say I get him on the next one I will get him on the next one but the angel beat him there oh my, Paul had and recognized and went into action hallelujah, we are as good as sitting right on the on the bank right now, why? God says so it was all over, God says so, I am on my road so that's just the way it was that's the way it always is hearing you're acting, you're believing. Why? You had because we were waiting. Why are you waiting for the Lord? You will hear, you will act, you will believe. It's not in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, blessed be his holy name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We shall end now so we can go into prayer. I'm just keeping it true. Hallelujah. Let's get the last quotation here. Oh, hallelujah. As the ego stares the net. As the ego stares the net. 1960. Oh, April 3rd. I'm glad. I'm doing really the final one now. Like 15. I'm glad. I'm glad, say my prophet. Upon this rock, a burn my church. And the gates of hell can't prevail against it. What kind of rock is it? It's a spiritual revelation. Who does man say that the son of man are? So, alas, some say Moses, but oh, what about you? Peter said, Thou art Christ, Son of the God, Son of God. Blessed art thou, Simon, Son of Jonah. Flesh and blood, they didn't reveal this to you. You never learned this in seminary. You never learned this by somebody telling you. But my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed this to you. And upon this rock, I built my church, and the gates of hell can prevail against it. The storm of life will never shake it. That's the reason he said he was an ego. He built the net. Hallelujah. Then the old mother ego, making ready for the little ones to be born. Oh, she will go out there and she will get, get everything that can just start soft leaves and takes the big pick and put them back in the corners and fixing them up for the skaters around so they won't stick anything around it. But she goes out there, gets a lamb and eat a, a rabbit or something, you will eat the meat off, meet the meat, said the prophet, and take the hair and the fur off, and you will drop it and 
put, put on the nest. Oh, she's making it really pretty for the little ones to come. That's the way Jehovah Echo does it too. He just fixes things up for us. Hallelujah. Oh my. When a new baby is born, we know one is coming soon. When a new baby is born, why? In the kingdom of God, he thinks he can walk. See now, but he always bumping up and down and running around, but he's having a good time. He's in the nest, hallelujah, where it's all fed at, you know, and that's the fall, don't you hurt you? And so, that's the way Mother Jehovah does it. She fixes her nest, hallelujah, real fluffy and nice for her little one that's going to be born. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Oh, and after a while, the eggs will come. And after that comes the little ego, and she goes down, and her papa ego, and they feed, they feed of their little ones till they get pretty good size. Then they get to a certain size. Now, mama ego is going to be positive that, that, that the little egos aren't going to be anything like a chicken. Hallelujah! They will never be like a chicken. Why? That's right. She don't want them at pound. They are egos, and she knows they are egos, and that's the way Jehovah ego does it. He don't want us to be chicken, to be buying a chicken. He want us to be egos, up in the blue. The nature of us is to be up there, where we are free. He who the Son has made free is free indeed. They want us to be up there. While you are waiting for the Lord, let's be on our feet. He will place you up there where you are not at barn. You are not like chicken. You are not looking for one. You are not in the barnyard. A chicken is a bird, but he only knows to go to a barnyard. And that's where he will raise his cheek. And there we come spider, we come python, we come snake and whatever. And then we eat the little chicken because he's just constrained with the barnyard. Although he's a, he's a bird, but he doesn't know to fly up to the sky to fly find a higher ground and put his babies there. But an echo, we go to the highest mountain, the highest mountain, and we are ego. There they wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strong like an ego. They want to wings like an ego. Hallelujah. Make your wings stronger this evening, my brothers and sisters. Make your wings stronger. Test your wings this evening. Make sure it's strong. It's strong for the journey. It's strong for the walk. It's strong for the road. We have a race to run. We will overcome because the Lord says so. He said, We will overcome as He overcame. Take your wing tonight. You're not a chicken. You are an eagle. Fly, hallelujah. Fly, hallelujah. While we go into the song, who oh, teach me, Lord, to wait on my knee in the old good time. You will answer my prayer. Teach me not to rely on what others do, but to wait in prayer for an answer from you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mind.
and all those that are online, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.